Mercedes have endured yet another difficult weekend in Saudi Arabia, and after dropping to fourth in the Constructors' Championship, the team has revealed some depressing news when it comes to the season they're expecting to have with the W15. Although this year's car has a brand new philosophy that the team expected a lot from, it seems like there is a fundamental issue that the high-profile engineers do not believe is easily fixable. So the question arises, did Mercedes make a mistake for the third consecutive year in a row? And more importantly, how will this translate to the on-track battles between Russell and Hamilton? George Russell has been able to provide some decent feedback about the W15. However, it's not what F1 fans would want to hear after Mercedes changed the entirety of their car ahead of the new campaign. To top that off, the team does not see a light at the end of the tunnel, because there's yet another fundamental issue that prevents them from performing at a high level when it comes to the high-speed corners, but we'll get to that later in this video. When talking about the issues with the W15 and how the car essentially became slower in just one week, Russell went on to say, We're still trying to understand this car because we've shown true performance at points over the last two weekends. FP1, straight out of the box, we were at the top of the timesheet and always in the top three. FP2, P2. Then both weekends, the pace just fell away from us. That hasn't been our competitors getting faster, that's been us getting slower. So we need to understand why that is, but it's fine margins now. Although Russell believes that the other drivers from Aston Martin as well as Ferrari are very close to them, the fact that the Marinello team is arguably the second fastest team on the grid stands as it is. And even more painfully for Mercedes is the fact that they've been outperformed by McLaren in Jeddah, with the Woking Bay squad now taking third place in the Constructors' Championship. Even though Hamilton was able to defend properly against Piastri on much older tyres, with the Aussie having the help of the DRS, when he received the soft tyre and was mounted with a challenge to pass Norris, who was on the same tyre age as well, Hamilton lost around one second in Sector 1 on new tyres compared to his compatriot, which is quite abysmal when you think about it. But one question keeps coming to everybody's mind. Why didn't Mercedes test out everything in the simulator and then correlate the data on the track? The answer to that gives even more depressing news for the Mercedes fans. They did exactly that, but the results were nowhere near what they expected. What this essentially means is that both Russell and Hamilton had different expectations compared to what they actually felt in Jeddah. And when addressing this matter to a further extent, Toto Wolff went on to say, I think there is a bigger factor with a lack of high speed than just the rear wing. We're missing downforce beyond the steps that you would have with a bigger rear wing. We tried that with Lewis and there is something that we don't understand because we were quick everywhere else pretty much and we know that we have a smaller rear wing. We're compensating for what we're losing through the corners but it's just the high speed where we're losing all the lap time. Our simulation points us in a direction and this is the setup range that we then choose. You put the right rear wing on and I think you gain a few tenths if you get the setup right or wrong but it's not a massive corridor of performance. It's more a fundamental thing that we believe the speed should be there. We measure the downforce, but we don't find it on the lap time. The sad part is that Mercedes 2024 car has been more or less built on Hamilton's feedback, starting from the seat requirements and ending all the way with the car having more rear downforce. And so far, Hamilton has reported a broken seat in Bahrain and a lack of rear downforce in both tracks. This goes to show that there is a huge discrepancy between what the drivers are asking and what they're receiving from the car, which could ultimately be led by the fact that the simulator data is just misleading Mercedes in a bad direction, and the team needs to sort out who is to blame at this. Is it the drivers for not giving good enough feedback, or is it the engineers who just don't understand what needs to be done in order to be competitive and at least fight for P2 with Ferrari and McLaren? Even when Hamilton started to complain about the speed of the guys ahead of him, saying that they're too fast to be caught, especially in the high speed, Bono went on to say, Yeah, the GPS agrees with you too. A statement that was definitely hopeless because at that point it was evident Mercedes couldn't do anything in order to improve throughout the course of the race. The seven-time world champion also had some strong words about the race pace of the W15, and when talking about what the team needs to do in order to become competitive and be where they wanted to be before the season started, Hamilton went on to say, The car is good in the low speed and not so bad in the medium, but in the high speed corners, we're miles off. The guys were... It was like I was in a different category when I was going through the high speed between the other people, the other guys around me. It's frustrating for sure to be three years in a row in almost the same position, but we'll get our heads down and keep working away. We haven't made big enough changes perhaps. 
You look at the three teams ahead of us, they still have different concepts of where we are in some areas, so we got some performance to add, that's for sure. Obviously, this is quite depressing to hear, because Mercedes entered the 2024 season with a brand new philosophy and design on their car, and the fact that they had some very interesting innovations that caught the eyes of their rivals, such as the design of the front wing as well as the wishbone of the front suspension, goes to show that this might not be as good as they initially hoped for. Yes, the benefit of this will be seen in races that have higher downforce requirements, but ultimately, both Russell and Hamilton were highly dissatisfied with the huge rear wing they received in Jeddah, as well as the modifications made on the front wing, which ultimately shows that while Mercedes hopes to bounce back in Australia, there is a fundamental issue that prevents them from performing at a sweet spot with the W15. To add salt to the wound, Hamilton has also expressed his fears about the porpoising phenomenon being back, and preventing him from pushing the car to its absolute limit. And that itself just goes to show that maybe Mercedes won't be competitive for podiums and race wins until the 2026 season comes. This kind of justifies the move of Hamilton to Ferrari, something that Mercedes is very likely to have understood as a personal offence and is now prioritising Russell with their strategy choices, which was seen in Jeddah after the first safety car was brought out by Lance Stroll. Now, the main part that Mercedes has fixed is the spiteful rear end of the car. However, that's not enough for them to be competitive. And although the team believes they found the right path for the car, it does seem like there are a lot of differences compared to where they are and where they want to be. To add salt to the wound, they have two very competitive drivers, and Mercedes might have chosen their leader for 2024 if they somehow can crawl back to the top spots and fight for podiums. And that driver is certainly Russell. The strategy choice as well as Russell's strongest start of the season do indicate that the younger Brit would be favoured with the upgrades that Mercedes are planning for the later half of the season, something that Hamilton will definitely be prevented from having a say into considering the fact that he could be moving all of that data into Ferrari if it turns out to be a highly competitive one. With this in mind, Mercedes is seemingly set for a very challenging start to the 2024 season. And with McLaren finding a lot of pace in Jeddah, even though they lacked a lot of straight line speed, it's safe to assume that P4 could be a realistic option when it comes to Mercedes' placement in the Constructors' Championship. Obviously, a lot needs to be done in order to improve, and judging by McLaren and Aston Martin's leaps in 2023 and 2022's winter period respectively, you cannot rule out Mercedes by any chance, but the odds are stacked against them, and there seems to be a lot on their plate right now. So, do you think that Mercedes can bounce back in 2024? And more importantly, do you think that this fundamental issue is one that cannot be fixed in the foreseeable future, or more precisely, before 2026? Let us know in the comments down below.